Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through the three types of buttons available in Squarespace. We're going to take a look at how to change the style, meaning the background color, the font, the shape, the outline, and even the padding for your primary, secondary, and tertiary buttons. Let's go ahead and hop into my demo site and take a look. So here we are in Squarespace and we'll be covering how to assign unique fonts, colors, and styles to these three types of buttons now available primary, secondary, and tertiary. We're covering a lot in this video, so feel free to use the quick links in the description to jump ahead, but let's go ahead and hop into edit mode, and I'll show you how to assign the specific type of button to a button block. If you click on it once, you'll get this quick option menu here. Here you can change the button type from primary to secondary or tertiary. You can also click on this option right here and change its alignment to left, center, or right, and if you don't like the button and you want to remove it, click the trash can and it'll go away. And if you want to edit the content of the button, like what it links to or what it says, click this icon right here. This will let you edit the button itself. You can also get to this menu by double clicking on the button. Two clicks and you can change the text. And clicking this gear icon, you can link to a page on your site, a web address, anywhere on the internet, upload a file, have it trigger an email or a phone call, totally up to you. I'll go ahead and select close, so I'll show you one more time. If we click on it once, we can change the type of button by selecting this drop down here. We can change the alignment of the button, left, center, or right for that button block, or you can delete it clicking that trash can icon. And if you click this edit icon, you'll be taken to the same option that you'll see if you double click on that button block. Here you can change the text for the button, link it to anything you want to link it to, and under the Design tab, we'll get those same options we saw before, Primary, Secondary, and Tertiary, and the Alignment. There's also a quick link right here to edit button styles, and we'll totally dig into that. Now, if you don't have a button on your site, to add one, click this plus sign, select the Button option, and you'll see that menu we were just looking at. I'll go ahead and delete this button by clicking once and pressing the trash can, and I'll say, yes, Squarespace, remove that block. And now we have primary, secondary, and tertiary. You ready to get into those unique fonts, colors, and styles? Let's do this. To change the fonts and colors, we're actually going to click this icon right here to open up our site styles menu. If I select fonts and scroll down to where it says buttons, this is where I can change the font for the primary, secondary, and tertiary button. They're all set to Poppins, which is the font family I've installed on my site. But let's say for this tertiary button, I actually want it to be a completely different font family, different everything. I just click on Family, and here I can grab a custom font in my style guide, or I can select Browse All Fonts. This is where I can pick a font either from the Google Font Database or some Adobe fonts are in here as well. Lots of cool options. If you know the name of a font you'd like to use, you can search for it by typing in right here or just click on the font that you'd like to have that button changed to. Notice only the tertiary button is changing. If we go back, you have some other options for these fonts as well. You can change the font weight to something bolder if that's a part of the font family you've selected. You can change the style from normal to italic and you can use the slider to adjust the size of that button. So even though tertiary started small, I could actually make it the biggest button on my site if I want to. So I'll show you how we got to this option one last time for fonts here. Let's go ahead and close that. We're in edit mode and I've clicked this paintbrush icon and I've selected fonts. If I scroll down here, I can pick buttons and this will allow me to change the fonts for that button. There's one other way to reach that site styles menu. We'll go ahead and hop out of edit mode and save our changes. And over here on the left hand side, I can select design, site styles, and I'll be taken back to that same menu. All right, let's move on to colors. If I select colors, you'll notice immediately these little icons pop up here. This is telling me the color theme that I've assigned to that specific section. These buttons are in a lightest one section. So I'm gonna click this icon here and we can change the colors. Now you can scroll down until you see button and you'll notice I have primary button background, button text, same for secondary and same for tertiary. Let's keep working with tertiary here. If I click this icon, 
I can grab a color from my color palette or I can select custom and use this slider here to pick a completely different color or even type in the color code using this option down here. Again, you can pick one from your palette just by clicking that option or hop into custom and use the color picker to pick something completely unique. I'll click out of here and show you one last time. If you click on this circle, that's how you get to that option. Let's change the button text to something different. How about a vibrant purple on that green? And there we go. That's super hard to read and I don't like it. So let's go ahead and grab one from the color palette. We'll change that back and let's change the background to uh, how about that dark teal? Little bit easier to see. All right, there we go. So how we got to that color menu one last time, I'll show you here. We're in site styles, select colors, and pay attention to what color theme you're editing. This will edit lightest one. So I wanna click into that color theme and I can make those changes if I scroll down and find the button style that I want to change. Primary, secondary, and tertiary. Click on that circle and you can grab a color from your color palette or select custom and pick one of your own from the color picker available there. Alrighty, last but not least, let's talk about the styles. You'll notice buttons is an option on our site styles menu and we haven't even gotten to it yet. Let's do that now. If I click on buttons, this is where I can actually change the shape of the button itself. I can also edit the text here as well. We did that using our font menu, but if we click on this option, we'll be able to quickly adjust the text. This part is not available in our font menu, so it's really important to notice. This will change the spacing between the letters. Check out primary. Do you see the letter spacing adjusting there? Pretty interesting, right? Now we've been working on editing tertiary, so I'm gonna click that option and we'll keep changing it. For shape, we have the option to have a fill or no fill, which will create an outline. We've got a leaf shape. We've got an underlying text. We have standard square edges here, slightly rounded edges, even more rounded, an oval, a leaf shape, and this is a text underline. And we also have no fill, which will just leave the border, which doesn't look like an underline because if we click out of here, we haven't actually increased the size of the outline. It's at zero PX and so nothing will show up. But if I move this slider over, this will adjust the thickness of that line underneath that button. Now let's explore those design options a little bit more. I'll go ahead and increase this so it's pretty visible in this tutorial. There we go. Now let's click on shape. And again, we're in fill. We have this square edges, slightly rounded, super rounded, oval, underline, which we just added with the slider there, and this leaflet shape. If we click on no fill, we'll get the outline. So again, we've got leaflet, underline, oval, rounded corners, slightly rounded corners, and a solid square. Now clicking out of that option, I've got one last thing to show you here, which I think is pretty darn important. These two icons represent padding, the distance between the edge of the text and the border of the button. If I increase this, this will make the button wider. If I increase this, it will make the button taller. That's a pretty interesting new feature that Squarespace has released with this button upgrade and it's very fun to play around with. Now again, with the text, this will adjust the letter spacing, which will also make the button wider so the text fits in there. But these two options here, again, will increase the width of the button, changing the distance between the edge of the text and the border. This increases the height of the button, changing the distance from the top and bottom of the text to the border. And yes, they're all equidistant. Now, one last thing I wanna show you here is let's say you make a bunch of changes and you don't like it. You want it to go back to the way the other buttons were styled. You can at any point in time have the button change to match the primary button. If you click this option here, I'll select continue and it'll go back to the way it was except for the color. Everything about the shape, the text, Everything about the text, the shape, the outline, and the padding, the distance between that text and the edge will match the primary button. That's how you reset that option there. So one last time, we're in site styles. If you select buttons, you can choose between primary, secondary, and tertiary. And this is where you can change the text, including the distance between the letters called letter spacing. You can also change the shape have it filled or no fill, which will create just an outline. And underneath that is how you change the thickness of the outline. And these two options will adjust the padding or the distance between the text and the edge. 
This top one adjusts the width of the button, and this lower one adjusts the height. However you decide to style those buttons, just make sure you select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. And that's it for your quick overview on how to change the style of those buttons now available in Squarespace. To learn more about customizing these buttons, like creating cool hover effects, check out the related videos linked in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, give me a like and comment and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial every single Tuesday and I want to make sure you catch the latest. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you're going to love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my custom codes and pro tips inside one gigantic PDF available now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.